Buongiorno, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about the best discoveries I made in 2022 when it comes to fragrances. Now, this is a part of a series that I usually do at the end of the year where I go through everything that I learned, that I tested in 2022 and tell you in a nutshell what worked and what didn't. So if you are interested in seeing like my most used fragrances, my most used products, best releases in 2022 and so on, you have a playlist down below in the description. You can click on it and you will have all the videos that I uploaded before this one. And also make sure to subscribe and also to hit the notification bell so you will get notified when I upload the upcoming videos. So Best discoveries of 2021. What do I mean by that? So we are talking about fragrances that are not new releases, are uh, kind of old fragrances that are on the market now for a while that I didn't know about. And yeah, I discovered this year. And I think I discovered a lot of fragrances this year. I will also talk about brands that I discovered that I didn't maybe test before and I was really really surprised how good they are and I will talk about one niche brand, one line of fragrances, one private collection and one affordable brand. So without further ado let's start. Let's start with niche fragrances and I definitely have discovered more designers and niche this year. So let's start with the first one that I already talked about in my birthday haul and that is The Bewitching Jasmine from Inhalagen. This is a jasmine oud combination. So not your typical rose oud fragrances, no. This time it is with jasmine, a lot of vanilla. It is sweet, but not as sweet as oud bouquet, for example. It's just the right amount of sweetness, at least to me. And it's so, so beautiful. Now, opening may deceive you as all oud fragrances in my experience if you see a fragrance that has oud in it usually you have to wait a little bit before smelling the fragrance because the oud is very very pungent and very strong in the beginning of fragrances so you get this oud in the beginning quite sharp i wouldn't say animalic but it's really really present you will also get the vanilla, you get the spices, but wait for the dry down. It's when the magic happens. <laughs> it's so, so, so good. You will get the jasmine, the jasmine really peaks through in the dry down. You will get the vanilla, the spices. The wood goes down a little bit. It's there, but it's not as strong and sharp and in your face. And the end result is really bewitching. It's really crazy beautiful, addictive and alluring. It has also an elegance to it. This is a fragrance that I would definitely recommend even for people who don't like oud. So definitely beginner oud friendly. It's really good in performance. It lasts strong. It projects moderate to strong. You don't need to spray a lot. So for me, this is definitely worth your money. Where's the hype that recently got? Uh, I mean, I knew about this fragrance for a while. I just didn't talk about it because I was like preparing as usual a buying guide for Penhaligans. So I didn't want to talk a lot about fragrances, but it's definitely worth the hype that it recently got and worth the money in my opinion, also because of the performance. So, The Bewitching Yasmin from Penhaligans. Next one is a fragrance that I talked, I mean, quite a lot on my channel. If you are subscribed, you will know. It's Blessed Baraka from Emisio. This is a totally unisex fragrance. I mean, all Emisio fragrances are, yeah, maybe if, except of Atomic Rose. The rest is quite unisex. Now, they created only three notes in this fragrance. Uh, it was amber, musk, and sandalwood. There's definitely more. I would say there is definitely some hidden here, some spicy note. Could be also from the amber accord. But anyway, the end result is 
a warm, spicy, amber fragrance, woody. I can say that this is maybe sexy on a woman, but on a man, oh my God. It's one of these fragrances that really captures you. It makes you go closer to the person who are wearing the fragrance. This is definitely one of them. It has a lot of similarities with Carlyle from uh, Parfum de Marie. You will see that the notes are not very similar, but the end result, the vibe, the effect is quite similar. Both of them have this sillage. This is one of the fragrances that has this amazing sillage. Actually, the sillage is better than the perfume itself. It's good, but I mean, it's the sillage <laughs> that makes this fragrance. It's so strong. You do not need a lot of sprays with this one. So I usually go with three sprays and I'm good to go. It's very long lasting, quite projecting. It's a strong projection. Uh, so if you want it to be a beast mode, definitely apply more. Stunning fragrance. It's not for everybody. Warning. This is not a fragrance that uh, is everybody's cup of tea, so definitely try it before you commit to a full bottle. I didn't like it at the beginning, but then when I tried it, it was maybe the third time, I was totally obsessed. I also discovered Jo Malone somehow this year. So I have two Jo Malone fragrances. It's not like I didn't test Jo Malone before I did, but it was not, I was not really serious about it. Let's say like that. And the first one that I have is Nectarine Blossom and Honey. Now, oh. this is such a stunning, fruity, fresh fragrance. Perfect for summer. It's amazing it's all about a fresh juicy sweet nectar and fragrance it's sweet yes but it has this freshness it has this typical jo malone airy watery thing going on that makes it quite wearable even if you don't like sweet fragrances i was actually worried that it was too sweet for the really hot weather but i got a decant went with it in Egypt, in the south of Egypt, Marsa Alam, which is really hot, and I could pull it off. I was not bothered by it, and that says a lot. Love this fragrance and has a very, very good performance. It has a solid, actually, moderate longevity and CF. So it's not one of these, you know, Jo Malone fragrances that you will spray and after an hour it will be gone, you know, with surgeon sea salt. No, this one stays, and if you spray them close, you will get it for quite a long time, especially that we are talking about the cologne, so it's not even an eau de toilette. The next one is from the Intense, the Cologne Intense line, so the one that comes in the black bottle, and that is Jasmine Sandback and Marigold. Now, I tested this one upon a recommendation of one of my subscribers, and I totally fell in love with it. Now, you have to be a real lover of jasmine. It's not a fresh jasmine. It's not this spring, you know, fresh, fruity jasmine fragrances. No, it's not. It's This is really an intense, strong jasmine that I would not recommend for summer, actually. This is too strong for summer, at least in my opinion. Can stand the cold weather, very good performance, very long lasting and quite projecting. So, it checks all the boxes. It performs like a very good eau de parfum. So I don't know about Corona Intense. Next fragrance, I don't know if it's considered niche or designer because it's from Erin. And the one that I discovered is Hibiscus Palm. I know it's quite a hyped up fragrance, but I couldn't test it for the longest time. And when I did, I fell in love. And I think I didn't like fall for the hype at the beginning because I am not a fan of these you no know, tropical, sweet, coconutty, tropical fragrances. I'm not a fan of these fragrances. But yeah, I decided to test it. 
And I don't regret it. Oh my god. Imagine French Japan, ylang ylang. So your typical tropical yellow florals. There is also some white florals in the background. There is hibiscus. That I think what lifts this fragrance up. It has also vanilla. It has coconut water. The coconut here is not like a thick, creamy coconut. No, it's really in the background. And the whole experience is so, so good. And it's one of the few fragrances that have these notes that I can wear also during summer. Now, honestly, I can't wear this one during the day unless it's not so hot. I usually wear this one more for the evening during the summer and also uh, springtime. I mean, I can wear it also now. Very luxurious, very beautiful, stunning fragrance worth the hype for sure. Again, if you want more details about this fragrance, you will find it in the description down below and in the eye up here. Next is a Tom Ford Lost Cherry. Technically, I didn't discover the fragrance this year. I smelled it before, but I appreciated the fragrance only this year. So I always heard about Lost Cherry. And from the notes, I already was like, this is for this fragrance is not for me. At that time, I was totally against gourmand fragrances. I cannot tolerate them. Now I am more open to them and, you know, testing this fragrance again and again, suddenly I get the hype and I fell in love with it that I got myself a bottle. Interestingly, I got this bottle on my birthday, so I have this small bottle only from October, so not a long time ago. And I tried to like see the dent, but I can tell you it's at least half gone. This is how much I used of this fragrance and how much I love it that I am now thinking about getting a full bottle of it. It's so addictive. The opening is very gourmand. Like you have a cherry pie in front of you. There is vanilla, there is almond, there's cherry. It's boozy. It's edible. You can eat it. But in the dry down, I get on my skin the woody notes, it's the sandalwood, it's then in the drive down, still gourmand, but more of this deep, complex fragrance. The things that I don't like about gourmands, sometimes it's, to me, smells a little bit cheap, a little bit childish. I don't know. I know it's a personal issue, but this is what I associate with heavily gourmand fragrances or sweet fragrances. This one, especially in the dry run, is amazing, it's addictive, it's sexy, it's out of this world beautiful. Love it, love it, love it. The only issue, as you all know, this one does not last at all. However, if you spray on clothes, it will cling on your clothes. But still, it's not a very good performing fragrance. I have also on this list quite a few fragrances that are blind buys. So yeah, I did really good with my blind buys this year. Now let's talk about the first one. Flora Botanica from Balenciaga. It's really worth the hype. Now I never got the hype behind this fragrance because I tested it and I got all this cannabis note and the rose was this fresh, sharp rose, green. I didn't like it. Now. The thing is with this fragrance is, number one, test it on your skin. Number two, you have to wait for the dry down because the dry down, this has a total different feeling to it. And number three, wear it during summer. Now, why do I say that? The first impression you will get from this fragrance is for some people, I bet that some people like it, but for the majority of people will be quite off-putting because you get the cannabis, it's a... Sorry, my battery died. Anyway, um, so just ignore the opening altogether. The dry down is totally different if you spray it on skin. If you spray on paper, it will remain this fresh rose, green, a little bit of cannabis. On your skin, with the warmth of your 
body, especially with the heat. So it's quite a good summer fragrance. The rose becomes creamy, almost balmy in a way. It's so magical. The dry down is completely different to the opening. So highly recommended. You have to try it for yourself. Such a good fragrance that is worth the hype. So Balenciaga Flora Botanica. Another blind buy, and I'm sorry about the lighting, is Chance Au Vive. Now this one is again a recommendation of a subscriber. And I love, love it, love it, love it. I even prefer it to the discovery of last year of Fresh because it has a little bit of a zinginess because of the blood orange notes here. So it's more on the citrusy side if you compare it with Old Fresh. And I just adore it. And you can see from the dent how much I like this fragrance and I have it only this year. So it's now a stable in my summer fragrance wardrobe. If you want a very fresh, summer fragrance but is still elegant Eau Vive is the best also fresh is amazing both of them are amazing summer fragrances that have this elegance to it I mean it's Chanel how can Chanel not create an elegant fragrance it's practically impossible next again a, a blind buy is Spice Bomb Infrared from Victor and Wolf. now I know it's a masculine fragrance but hear me out this is totally unisex. So it has the DNA of spice bomb. So it's so good. So it's a spicy, fruity fragrance. It has a lot of berries in it, which really makes it to the feminine side. So it makes it quite unisex. It's sweet. There is the spicy touch, there's the freshness in it, and it's so, so sexy. I personally, as a woman, prefer infrared on myself. Again, I would love to smell it on a man, but I personally can wear this fragrance no problem, totally unisex. If you love a sweet, spicy fragrance, get yourself this one. I think it is discontinued now, but you can still find it. So if you can't find it, the best alternative is the extreme version, which is also quite unisex. This is just a tad more feminine, let's say. And the last blind buy on this list is my beloved Valentino Donna Aqua. I wanted to talk about this fragrance so many times because it's so good and I have no idea why would Valentino discontinue such a gorgeous scent. This is almonds, vanilla, jasmine. This is like Valentino born in Roma but instead of the black currant you have here almonds. This is the best way I can describe it and it's less woody than born in Roma. Oh, such a gorgeous scent. Let me spray it. Mm. everything is in the right balance nothing is too much it's so good the only issue a part of being discontinued is the longevity unfortunately if i overspray, it is weak to moderate but definitely a very very weak fragrance and and it's also discontinued, but I had to include this fragrance because it's one of the best discoveries of the year. I love this fragrance and I have already a backup of it uh, arriving tomorrow, actually. So I can't wait to have it so I can spray this one without feeling guilty. Next, I decided to include Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet. Now, I know what you are thinking. How can you, a fragrance head, someone who makes fragrance reviews only discover blooming bouquets this year because technically i didn't discover it this year i rediscovered it so i am cheating just a little bit so i am familiar with blooming bouquet i think everybody knows about it it's a gorgeous peony rose fragrance oh my god i sprayed my face <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway a fresh elegant spring summer fragrance and somehow i never really liked the fragrance and also the longevity and sillage was mm, not really good on it so i never recommended it because of that i never spoke about it but i knew it i don't know what happened and i decided to buy it this year i know the longevity did not change it's still a very weak fragrance longevity and sillage is definitely on the weak side here but i don't know i just don't care this is such a fresh floral fragrance and so happy and so beautiful feminine elegant uh yeah i now just can't imagine my life without it now i am exaggerating a little bit it's not so much but the fact that i got a backup bottle really says a lot of how much i love this fragrance next fragrance is Fleur Mask from Narciso Rodriguez. Why did I sleep on this fragrance? I don't know why, especially that I really, really love Narciso Rodriguez. It means the obsession with this brand is real. You'll know how much I love it, how many fragrances I have on him. I mean, almost every single one. And again, I have to thank a lovely subscriber. So when Mask Noir came out, lovely subscriber asked me, what is the difference between Fleur Mask and Mask Noir Rose? And I suddenly realized that I don't have Fleur Mask, not even like in a sample, and I don't remember how it smelled like. So I went ahead and tested it, and I was reintroduced to Fleur Mask. So again, a rediscovery, let's say. Now, this is, as the name says, a floral musky fragrance. It's a lot of rose, has a lot of similarities with the Eau de Parfum for her, but the rose here is a little bit like the color of the bottle. It's more uplifting, it's more fun, it's a little bit more outgoing, you know. It still has the elegance of the Sisu mask, but it's the fun aspect of this fragrance that makes it quite unique, I would say and i definitely prefer it to the eau de parfum by the way uh, not a sweet fragrance at all but the rose here is this vibrant pink luscious sweet rose and i love it for that and it's the pink pepper that gives this fragrance quite a kick there is a spicy touch of the pink pepper it makes it different to the other flanker especially so I love this one and I'm really happy that I added it to my collection. Last fragrance, we have Izzy Miyake Lodi Izzy Shade of Sunrise. I talked about this one quite a lot and I'm not going to bother you more. This is the fresh frangipani. So imagine Lodi Izzy with a lot of frangipani in it. So it retains this freshness. It's not too cloying. It's a fresh tropical fragrance i really really like very 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 affordable but it is discontinued you can still find it at a very very good price now i have actually a backup bottle of it this is how much i like it is it like competing for example with uh, hibiscus palm from erin no i am not going to say that but for the price this is a really good fragrance especially for people who don't like the client tropical fragrances like terracotta from guerlain and, and these type of fragrances you will definitely like this one check it out and it's quite affordable so it's not going to break the bank now let's talk about brands and I have to say, compared with last year, it's not like there is a brand that took my breath away. Last year, I discovered Memo. I discovered Atelier des Ors, two of my, of my favorite niche brands that just blew my mind, especially Memo. This year, I can't say that I have the same, like, out of the world, amazing niche brand that I discovered. But I have quite a discovery this year and that is Nobile 1942. This is an Italian niche brand. I have here La Danza delle Libellole. I have a review on it. You can check it on my channel. You will find it in the description. 
and since this fragrance i started to collect samples decans and i still don't have all the fragrances but i have let's say 70 percent uh, of this brand fragrances and i'm telling you this is the brand that you should check out of course my favorite one till now is la danza de libellule but i have two others that i can't say that are on my wish list but kind of I'm still testing these fragrances, but really this is a beautiful niche brand that is not exactly affordable, but it's not one that will like definitely break your bank. If we compare it to, especially now with the price hike of uh, houses like Dior or Chanel, it's a good option. As I said, I am preparing the buying guide when I finish it if i have all the fragrances i mean i am obsessed when i want to do a buying guide i have to smell everything i know it's not always possible but i try at least so definitely stay tuned for that buying guide for now i would definitely recommend la danza delle libellule and it's definitely an italian niche brand that stands out to be completely honest, last year and this year I had on my wish list to test more niche brands, Italian niche brands. And I didn't talk about it on my channel, but I tested a few. Some were not bad, were definitely good brands, but they are not my style. And some are just too old school. So this is definitely the best Italian brands that I tested till now. I'm not going to tell you the rest of the brands. I will maybe do a dedicated video on that subject. But anyway, let's move on. Now, when it comes to private collection, you will be shocked. I discovered this year Tom Ford. Yes, yes, yes. Again, it wouldn't be a discovery. It's more of a rediscovery or more. I was more committed to test more fragrances from Tom Ford. And honestly, at the beginning of my fragrance journey, I was never a fan of Tom Ford. I was like, why is everybody talking about this brand? I don't like anything from it. And now I just can't get enough of Tom Ford. Unfortunately, the price tag. Otherwise, yeah, I would have more fragrances. But yes, Tom Ford is the discovery of the year when it comes to private line from designer brands. Now let's talk about lines. And I have two lines that I discovered this year. The first one is the portraits from Penhaligans. Definitely a line that is overall really, really good. I have the Butching Yasmin. I love changing constants. I can't wait to test the word, the world according to Arthur. Uh, there are a few men fragrances from this line that are quite nice. So I really, really like this line. I don't like the bottles, to be completely honest. Everybody talks about these bottles like, oh, it's so beautiful. I, I personally can't get it, but I don't care about presentation like bottles. I care more about the smell. Love the line. I may do in the future like a buying guide on this line. But I, I am missing some fragrances that were not included in the discovery set. So once I get decants or samples and can test these fragrances, I will definitely film that buying guide. Next line is Signatures of the Sun from Aqua di Parma. And I discovered actually this line preparing for a buying guide. And I honestly, I did, wasn't like a big fan of this line in the beginning. I mean, I love the brand Aqua di Parma, like the aesthetic of the whole brand. My favorite line is it's Blue Mediterranean. I already have a buying guide on it. Check the description. And I thought, yeah, I should also do an overview of the brand and check the other lines to a dedicated buying guide on them. So I started to collect fragrances, like samples and decans of signatures of the sun. These are the ones that come in the black bottle. And honestly, I was quite surprised. I don't know why I had this idea that these are mostly men fragrances and were not so special. Some are, to be honest, but they have some scents that are really, really beautiful. For example, Vanilla that I already have is quite an underrated vanilla fragrance. It's not your typical vanilla. And this is maybe why a lot of people shy away from it. It's in the same 
vibe, let's say, like Santal Karma from Atelier Cologne. That is a fresh, soft sandalwood that is like a second skin. The same goes for vanilla, vanilla. I totally fell in love with Sandalo, which is a sandalwood fragrance. Definitely masculine. It's not a feminine fragrance at all, but it's a beautiful men fragrance. They have also the Flora Solili of the Valley. You have Magnolia. You have Osmantis, Yuzo, Camellia. I really liked Camellia. And also Magnolia was quite nice. Overall, it's quite a simple, easygoing, chic, aesthetic so again i am preparing for the buying guide on that line it will be coming very very soon because i don't want to wait till summer because it has a lot of quite winter fragrances like vanilla like wood like leather sandalo quercia so some i would say more of winter fragrances this video is taking too long i'm so sorry but last category we make it quite quick is affordable brand and one that i discovered this year is if Rocher, French um, drugstore, I would say, brand, I know how to call it. It's in the same category like here in Italy, L'Herbolario. And I don't have any fragrances of the brand. And the reason why is because I was on a no buy. So I tested these fragrances, I didn't buy any of them. And let me tell you, they have quite nice fragrances. And they have, I would say, everything covered. So they have the fresh florals, they have more of this deep, ambery, little bit gourmand fragrances, they have the tropical fragrances. So even the men fragrances, I, I maybe tested one or two of them, they were quite nice. I wouldn't say that these are out of the world fragrances, they are not, but they are quite beautiful and quite nice for the price tag, very, very affordable. Again, I will definitely do some video on this brand. With that, I finished. These are the best discoveries I made in 2022. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please give it a thumb up and consider subscribing to my channel. Definitely stay tuned for my upcoming videos. And if you liked this one, then check the playlist down below where I have the whole series. Please tell me in the comments down below what is the best discovery you made in 2022. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Ciao!